Oh, praise yeah. it to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our mighty rock and redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Elohim who hears the, the pride, the, the prayers and the cries of the afflicted. Hallelujah. Who redeems his people from the oppressor. The one who is our sovereign and our king, who justifies the righteous and condemns the wicked. We give all praises, all honor, all glory to the Most High God. Hallelujah. 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 Confounds the adversaries, confounds the enemies. The one who redeems us from our strife and our afflictions, and he lets not our enemies prevail over us. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Most High, Yah. We thank the Most High for this beautiful Shabbat day. It's such a wonderful day. The sun, the weather, Hallelujah. all praises to Yah, the fresh air. Yes. We're grateful for this season in which we are in, which is heading swiftly. We're here on Adar the 20th. And in a week and a half, it will actually be the New Year's, the first of our Eve. Hallelujah. The season of life and renewal is upon us. And we want to talk about that in the study today and what it means for us as Hebrews. All praise to the Most High Yah. The life, death, and resurrection of the Hebrew slaves, the Hebraic lecture. We want to talk about that. Um, and this is something that me and Maury Amit talks about that he actually shared with me. In our lives, we have seasons of a magnificent birth. Magnificent birth. Just like Yehoshua HaMashiach. And then, at some point, an unexpected death. But this death when in Yehoshua leads to a miraculous resurrection unto his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So us as Hebrews, we all go through this phase at different periods in our life. When we first find Yah, Yah first finds us. That's a miraculous birth. We're born again. In a wonderful way. But then at some time in your walk, you face strife, persecution, oppression, affliction, which leads to some form of a death. But when we wait on Yah, when we wait on him, he gives us resurrection power. Hallelujah. He renews our life and restores us from Sheol, from the grave. Blessed art thou. Let's say the prayer. Sorry, see God. You, you know, you go ahead. You know, you got to do this the right way. <laughs> I'm feeling good today. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Yeah. Baruch Atah Yehoah Elohim. Blessed art thou, Yehovah our Elohim. Elohe Abotenu. The Elohim of our forefathers. Elohe Abraham Yitzchak with Yisrael. The Elohim of Abraham Yitzchak with Yisrael. Elohe Hashilikim. The Elohim of the Apostles. Kephas. Kepha. Paulos. Paul. Yochanan. John. Yaakov. Yaakov. Uh, uh, um, Toma. Toma. Amen. Barnabi. Barnabas. Bartamai. Bartholomew. Marcus. Mark. Matit Yahu. Matit Yahu. Lucas. Luke. Wakoha Bakorin. And all of the chosen. Hallelujah. Toda Yahuwah. Thank you, Yehovah. He's our car tanu kohazman. For thou rememberest us all the time. Ataha el mitkoman. Thou art the el of uh, vengeance. Uh, uh, kum. Oh, of resurrection. Hallelujah. Mitkoman men ha hamot. Resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. Wa yadka kazakmiyo. And thy hand is very strong. The Hoshia Miyad Hamoet. To save us from the hand of death. Hallelujah. Toda Yehovah. Thank you, Yehovah. Salaklanu ko katatenu. Forgive us of all of our sins. Ki asinu raim ko yamenu. We do wicked all of our days. About 
Amen. And thou hast forgotten all of our sins before thee. And thou hast cast the sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Praise Yah. Yeah. Toda Yahoo. Hallelujah. Nah, Yahoo. Please, Yahoo. Tishma to feel our tainu. Hear our prayer. Our Ed Hashabat Hazot. On this Shabbat. With Tain Lanu Rukeka. And give us thy Ruach. Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh. Lehiot, uh, uh, Po, um, Emeka. To be here with thee. Amen. Um, uh, all of our days. Amen. Tain lanu kakmadad ubina. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Ka ashir anaknu nikra torateka. As we read that law. Amen. To seem kola ko ko betok levavenu. Put all of it upon our hearts. Amen. Well, uh, our makash benu gankin. And also upon our thoughts. Amen. Tedafe koha kole Israel. Hear all of the sick, heal all of the sick Israelites. Well, uh, Tain, uh, 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 the koha ene bene Israel em, um, roin. And give all of the Israelites. Uh, all, all of the uh, eyes of Israel. Ah, give all of the eyes of Israel to see. Cain, with koha asnayim lishmoa, and all the ears to hear. Cain, with tain le koha yadim kazak, and give strength to all hands. Amen. With ta asen raglenu leleket bashalom, and make our feet to walk in peace. Amen. Tain lanu hakalina shek. Give us the weapons of, of armor. Amen. Ha Yeshua. The helmet of salvation. Shiryon Zadik. The breastplate of righteousness. Ha Legor Emet. The girdle of truth. Naale Shalom. The shoes of peace. Makain Shalom. I mean, Makain Emuna. The shield of faith. Kerev Ruach. And the sword of the Ruach. We're called Tefilo. The Bishfil Koha Kasidin. And all the prayers of the saints. Amen. Tis koro tano. Remember us. But ha yon ha zaman ha akrim. In the last time. Amen. Tepere ko mishpaka bene Yisrael. Bless all the family of the children of Israel. Betok ko panot ha arets. Amongst all the corners of the earth. Amen. Modima naknu laka. We give thanks to thee. Adonai Yehoshua. Adonai Yehoshua. Lako devari. For all things. Toda Abaya. Thank you, Abaya. Bashem Yehoshua Hamashiach. In the name of Yehoshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Let me. Um... Oh, you're going to flip up the calendar that's behind you? Okay. Toda Abaya. It's a new season, y'all. New season is upon us. The new year is soon to come. Amen. We thank God for mighty deliverance and great victories in his name. Hallelujah. Um, we thank you, family, for all of the support, the wonderful support that you have blessed this ministry with. And we want to say thank you and we appreciate all you do to help the body of Kai Yeshua grow. And we are grateful for those who support the Hebrew class. The Hebrew, how did how y'all like the Hebrew class today? Okay. All praise to the Most High Yah. All the people, all the fam from the Hebrew class. Give a shout out. It's a great class today. Hallelujah. Uh, really great progress there. Our people are learning a language based around Yehoshua HaMashiach himself, for he is the Aleph in the town. We thank you again for your support, and we pray that you see the fruit of the ministry. Please send tithes, offerings, and alms or donations to kayashua at gmail on Zelle. For those who use Cash App, please send your support at dollar sign kayashua. Also, for those who use PayPal, you can go to our website, kayashua.com, and you can support there. Hit the yellow donate button. 
to leave an arm, a tithe, an offering, or a donation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, uh, we also want to thank you for the support of the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures Gold Edition, which continues to do exceedingly well. And we pray that it enlightens the minds and the hearts of our people. It is now in Uganda. Praise be to the Most High, Yah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Most High is spreading the outreach of the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures. Thank you, Mori Ahmed, for your support in making these connections in Africa. It's in Ghana. Went to the, 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 uh, the head of the tribe of um, that's the, Igbo, the Igbo tribe in Ghana, the chief. Hallelujah. We got pictures of that when it took place. More I admit, thank you for that. For that. And um, also, Moray Hopton, y'all bless you. Um, thank you for making this uh, such a successful endeavor that the word of Yah, along with the images, the true images of our people and of our Mashiach, are going forth throughout the four corners of the earth. This is now going in Christian churches in Uganda, waking them up. Hallelujah. Can you believe this? Hallelujah. 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 And Mori, I went there and converted many souls, telling them they're the Hebrews mm. and sharing with them the books. And they want the works over there. And it's been spreading. So we thank the Most High Yah. That means the language of Hebrew will soon be in these locations. And the people will be able to communicate in one tongue. Mm. All praise to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank also the body for the support of the Book and Secrets of Enoch and the Enoch Calendar. Look for the new Enoch Calendar for 2023 to come out, y'all willing, in the next week or two, around the time of New Year. That will have the updated Moedims and appointed feasts and so forth and so on. And we also have the Book of Enoch, the first and second Book of Enoch in Hebrew and English. This is the only place you can find Hebrew and English for the Book of Enoch, you know, with Hebraic understanding. So we're grateful for that. Um, hallelujah. Um, what else? And also the lost acts of the holy apostles, a wonderful and very significant book. And through this, we were able to celebrate the martyrdom of Matiya mm. during the Feast of Purim. And we can acknowledge all of these days and all of the walks that Yehoshua appointed to the 12 apostles and the 72 um, disciples. All of this is detailed in this great book, um, The Lost Acts, for all of them, Peter, Paul, John, James, the genealogy of the apostles. All of this is made possible by your support. Thank you for making and positioning Kai Yeshua to be a very unique ministry in Israel. We give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yah because he makes these things possible. And all of you and all of the congregations throughout Israel, all of the assemblies, may Yah bless you for all of your individual and unique gifts. We're all different members of the body, and each member has its own important part. And when we come together, we have something very mighty and very great. So we thank you for all, all of the assemblies doing your part to edify the nation of Israel. Some gather the people together, some teach the people, some train the people, uh, some clothe the people. That, you know, we all have different gifts. So we just want to acknowledge the Most High for bringing them together in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, y'all ready for the study? I, I wanted to acknowledge the people, but I don't, um, it's not coming up here on my phone. Um, hand that. Okay, so I'll use this one. But check and see what's going on with that. Lakia Hood, Shabbat Shalom, Lance White. Shabbat Shalom, Marcia Hamilton, Nukia, Yakalia, um, uh, Zavia, Doe. Um, Alyosha, Eliezer Cornelia, Shabbat Shalom, Dwight Yehuda, Shabbat Shalom, Sister Kiki, Zavia, I think I just said you, hallelujah, <laughs> Nigel, Janica, Shabbat Shalom, Keisha L, Arnell Robinson, Kasita Malek, Saraftia, in the house, Yaakov 12, Yehuda, Yahuwah's Kingdom, Shabbat Shalom, Devre Howard, um, Ari, Ben Yehuda's, Ben Yehuda, salute, Eliana, Shabbat Shalom, Cynthia, Lindsay, Kenya, Ben Yehuda, Natasha, Arizari, um, Ahava, Walter, Shabbat Shalom, Scott Jones, Angela Burns, Pedro, Eliezer, Guzman, Jason, Camphor, Shabbat Shalom and welcome. Um, Rashard Smith, Shabbat Shalom, brother. 
Jadari Malek the second, Shabbat Shalom. Um, Ducey, Oni, Shabbat Shalom to the two of y'all. Um, Ovaja, Shabbat Shalom. Dewan, Israel. Curvin, Neptune, Israel, child, and Yoel, Yah, Yisrael, Shabbat Shalom. James Milton Holmes, Jr., Shabbat Shalom. Gadelia, Shabbat Shalom. Ima Kanani, Shabbat Shalom. Amit, Shabbat Shalom. Brother Yehuda and Ayman, Shabbat Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yah. Told for sharing. Um, we're going to get into the study, the life, death, and resurrection of the Hebrew slaves. We're going to start by reading a miraculous birth. Let's go to the Testament of Yahshua. Mm. Maybe Matthew? Maybe go to Matthew? Let's look at this miraculous birth here. Matit mm. Yahoo, mm. maybe chapter. Let's see. Chapter 1, let's do maybe verse 18. We'll do 1 and 18. The birth of Yehoshua HaMashiach. In our walk as Hebrews, there's always going to be a miraculous birth. Something that begins and starts with such great uh, glory given from Yah, such great joy, gladness. All of these things come from above. But then as we walk the walk, we have to experience some sort of a death so that Yah can restore and resurrect us again. So we're going to see this played out in the life of Yehoshua HaMashiach and throughout all of the scriptures as we go through these words today. And he's going to show us how he can take what Satan means for evil and turn it into Absolute good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Matit Yahu 1 and 18. All right. With Zaydabar, who led it, Yehoshua. And this is the birth of, this is the matter of the birth of Yehoshua. Hamashiach. Miriam and Mo, Mary was his mother. Haita, uh, Meorsha, hey, Meorsha, mommy, like Meorsha. The spouse came, the Yosef, the spouse to Yosef or Joseph, Ubeterim Yavo, and before he went in, before he went, Aleha into her, Nimsat, Nimzait. Hara Meruak Hakodesh. She was found with uh, Hara. Like, uh, like, 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 you know, pregnant. Pregnant? Okay, she was found pregnant. Meruak from the Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Go ahead. All right, we're in the, we're in the Gospel of Matit Yahoo. Chapter 1, verse 18. Dang. Now, the birth of Yehoshua HaMashiach was on this wise mm -hmm. when as his mother Miriam was espoused to Yosef before they came together she was found with child of the Ruach HaKodesh Hallelujah verse 19 where Yosef ba Baala Ish Sadiq and Yosef Baala her husband Ish Sadiq is a righteous man Zadik means righteous okay Isha's man. Walo Abba Litata. And he did not uh, go to her to take her. Le Kirpa. Um, reproof? Rebuke? Approach. Approach? Reproach came. Wayomir Ashel Khena Basetar. Basetar. Basetir. Um, and he said, I will send her away, I will send her away or divorce her in secret. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then Yosef, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, 
was minded to put her away privily. Okay. Verse 20. Who koshev kazot? And he thought this. Wahine ma'ak ma'ak Yehoah. And as he thought this, an angel of Yehoah near Eliwa appeared unto him. Bachalom in a dream. Why yo mer Yosef? And he said, Yosef, Bain Dawid, son of David, Al Tira, do not be afraid. Mikwakat et Miriam to take Miriam, Ishtika, your wife, Ki Hanotsar of Bequirba, for she has been kept close. Me Ruaka Kodesh who? Baruach HaKodesh. Verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yehovah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, thou son of Dawid, fear not to take unto thee Miriam thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Verse 21. Well, he yo let it bane wa quarata, and she gave birth to a son, and you will call his name Wakwarata uh, Etchemo Yehoshua. You will call his name Yehoshua. Kihu Yoshia, for he shall save Et. Amo Mekakotehem. He will save his people from their sins. Amen. Verse 21. Amen. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yehoshua. Amen. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Wakol zot haital the mal oat. And all of this was to fulfill at the bar Yehoah, to fulfill the word of Yehoah. Ashir the bir biyad hanavi, that he spoke by the hand of the prophet. Lemur saying. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yehovah by the prophet, saying, Verse 23. Hine ha alma hara ha yoledit. The alma shall conceive Bain Wakwaru um a son, and he shall be called Shemo, his name, Emmanuel. Or Emmanuel, Ashir Perusho Ha'el Emanu, that it might be fulfilled, Parush, uh, the meaning, I think, that El Emanu, that El or Elohim Emanu is with us. Amen. Verse 20, verse 23. Cain. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Mm. And bear a son, King. and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is Elohim is with us. Cain, interpretation, parush, perosh, as well. Why ye quats Yosef, and Yosef awoke Mishanta, uh, Mishnato, from his sleep. Why ye as Ka'ashir Zewahu? Zewahu. And he did as he was commanded, Malak Yehoah, by the angel of Yehoah. Where is Soph at Ishto, and he gathered his Ish, his wife, El Beto, unto, the, unto his house. Verse 24. Then Yosef, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of Yehoah had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we see a miraculous birth take place here. But soon thereafter, what took place after his birth? Murder. What kind of murder? Uh, yeah. Herod. Yeah. So we see a miraculous birth. Then Herod sends out a commandment to kill all of the male children two years old and under. So then we see a death. But then the Most High judges and strikes Herod dead, and then Yehoshua comes back 
to the land of Israel, we have that resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So him and John the Baptist resurrected that lost generation. You had a whole generation of children wiped out two years and under. They were the only ones in the land of Yehuda who were the age that they were at that time. Everyone else was wiped out. So imagine a whole generation of first and second graders just eliminated. Except for two, Yehoshua and John the Baptist. So we have a miraculous birth, just like with John the Baptist, a, a miracle birth, a death, and then a resurrection. And this happens in all of our lives as we walk in his truth. Hallelujah. 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 So let's take a look. Let's see. Let's go to Hebrew Israelite scriptures. Um, do we have any comments? Anything that we need to read? From? Not yet? Okay. Okay, let's go to, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Better Sheet. Let's go to Better Sheet. Chapter... I think 19. 19. 18. Genesis 18. Start at verse 1. Oh, before we do that, I want to look at um, some images. So let's go to the children of Israel. The children of Israel, Exodus. Now, none of these pictures are going to show who the true children of Israel are, right? But I kind of want to show a point. Let's look at this one here. What do we have here? The Red Sea being split. The Israelites going through. Hey, we have the water on either side in the shape of a canal. And then we have the seed of Israel going through the canal. And they're coming from one side, which is Mitzrayim, which means trouble or tribulation, onto the other side, which is the promised land, the land of Israel is what they're supposed to do. You're actually watching... A birth take place. What happens when a woman is pregnant and she's about to go in labor? Her water breaks. So we have the breaking of the water. And as the breaking of the water takes place, it divides. And then we have the seed that comes through the canal. And it's going from one side, the side of Egypt, which is trouble. When a woman is giving birth, she is in birth pains, distress, Egypt. So the children of Israel are going through from this birth pains through the canal and out of the womb. And when they cross over from this side of Egypt, where they're known as Egyptian or have the Egyptian ways, when they cross over onto the other side, they're a new birth. They are the children, the nation of Israel. They're no longer a nation in captivity within another nation. They're no longer in confinement. They're no longer a proverb and a byword. The, children, the, the Egyptians didn't call the children of Israel. They didn't call them Israelites. They called them proverbs, bywords. They didn't call us by our names. They didn't want to speak in Hebrew, just like in today's time. So Moshe was sent by the Most High Yah to lead the people out. Led by the Ruach HaKodesh, this pillar of fire. So this is a symbol, this is symbolic of the birth of the nation of Israel. 
Hallelujah. But then what happens to us? Let's see. We go into slavery. Sleek eye. I'll get rid of this thing. Okay. We go into slavery as a nation. Much the same way we were birthed in, right? Mm. Through the water. Now we go into slavery, a symbol of the death of the children of Israel. And how does this death take place? Through the water. The transatlantic slave trade. We were birthed through the water, but now we're going back the way we came. Now we're going back into Egypt from the promised land. Now we're going back into the water. And we're coming out on the other side, back in Egypt again. It's like a baby going right back up inside of the womb. A miraculous birth that can only be done by the hand of Yah. The Most High Yah, through Yehoshua HaMashiach, brings ten plagues upon Pharaoh in Egypt and delivers them by a mighty hand, which only Yah, the Creator, could do. This is a magnificent birth. And it had the entire world, the entire earth talking about the signs and wonders that were done for our people. But then through course of time, the children of Israel forgot the Most High Yah, and this caused a death, a spiritual death to our people, where we were no longer remembered as the children of Yah. Our name was erased from the earth. We were called by words and proverbs all over again. We were not known as Israelites anymore. The nation of Israel was no more and was replaced with Jewish. The heathen stole our heritage and Yisrael was no more. But I tell you, by Shem Yehosha HaMashiach, we are that generation who will witness the miracle of of the resurrection power of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are that generation who is being risen back up from the dead to a mighty and magnificent restoration of who we are that only Yah could do. Man could not bring us back from the brinks of this to what Yah is going to lead us to. That's the power of the resurrection of the Most High Yah within us. So all praises to the Most High Yah. So we go through a miraculous birth, then the season of death, and when we're found faithful, we have a miraculous resurrection, all to the glory of the Most High Yah. And we all must experience this in our walk as saints and believers. So Yehoshua was born of a miracle birth, a virgin birth, then crucified, killed on the cross, then resurrected to the right hand of the Father. And he has that same power as he had to deliver his own self from death and hell and raise himself up by his own might to the right hand side of the Father. He's going to do that same mighty act and deed within us. All praises to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's see. It played out. This same scenario played out here. Let's go to Better Sheep, Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. We're in the book of Genesis, better sheep, chapter 18 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Yehovah appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. How? Hospitable are you to strangers, especially to other believers. Abraham got up from his tent door while he was in pain from being circumcised and ran to meet these three men that would actually be the angels of Yah. 
Yehoshua and the two angels. So his willingness to serve and then to prepare a meal, which becomes a sacrifice, enabled him to receive the blessing of the good news of a new born son. So when we go to the house of Yah and we're willing to make sacrifices, you never know what Yah, what miracle he's willing to do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And said, My Adonai, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let that little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Now we see Yehoshua, when he was with the twelve disciples, he took the water and washed the feet of his servants. But Abraham is doing it now for Hamashiach here. Washing the feet of his Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. Didn't Yehoshua constantly break bread for his apostles and disciples and those who followed him, the multitude in the wilderness? Okay. Now we see Abraham doing the same works of the Mashiach. And he doesn't even know he's honoring Yah himself personally by doing this. How many times have Yah sent someone unto your life who, by the way, you treated this person, Yah was considering it that you treated him? Or maybe it was Yehoshua himself in a changed form come across your path at one point in your life. I'm of the opinion that at some point in our life, we all encounter Yehoshua. That's my opinion. But I believe at some point in all of our lives, we will come across Yehoshua and he may be disguised as just someone else. And the way you treat him may have a great and large impact on the course of your life. So beware of how you treat the stranger. Hallelujah. Verse 5. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. And comfort ye your hearts. Comfort ye your hearts. What is the comforter? The royal half of this. Mm, now he sends the comforter to comfort Yehoshua and the angels. His deeds will bring about a miraculous birth. And comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Mm -hmm. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And sisters, if your husbands were to come to you and tell you to do this for strangers, your willingness to obey and be faithful in this could be the greatest blessing in your life without you knowing if your husband is a man of Yah and he's moved by the Ruach of Elohim to tell you to do something like this, if she resisted, would she have received the promised child? No. If she said, no, Abraham, I don't know who these men are. These, who are these people? Let's go to Hebrews 13. And let me know whenever we have comments. Hebrews 13 and 1. Book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 1. Dang. Let brotherly love continue. Mm -hmm. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Don't forget to entertain strangers. Why? Go ahead. For thereby some have entertained angels. Some have entertained angels. Unaware. Unaware. So you may mistreat a stranger and you might be mistreating the angel of Yah. Or maybe even your host for himself. Mm -hmm. I believe all of us will come across an angel at one point in our life as a testimony as to how we treated the servants of the kingdom of heaven. And what if it's Jehoshua himself that you come across, even as he did in the book of Luke towards the end, he disguised himself when the apostles were talking with him and didn't even know this was Jehoshua. 
he came to Miriam, Magdalene, in the garden, dressed as a gardener. She didn't know that was the Messiah. So how much more for, so for us? This is the same Elohim yesterday and today and forever. So if he did that in days of old, do you think he might not do that in our days and times? Watch how you treat the stranger. Read it one more time. Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Mm -hmm. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Read. Remember them that are in bonds. How do you treat the people in jail? Those in your family, those who you know who's in prison, those who are locked away, do you have an opportunity to help them, to give them encouragement, to send alms to them, to put a little money on their books, make sure they have a little comfort, maybe a phone call here and there? Mm -hmm. Remember them that are in bonds, is bound with them, and them which suffer adversity. Or do you say, oh man, that person's in jail? And then you just write them off, forgetting that Yehoshua was in jail, Joseph was in jail, Peter was in jail, Paul was in jail, John was in jail. They tried to put Moses in jail. <laughs> Who else? Daniel was in jail. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in jail. All the, the, the apostles. All of the apostles. Probably all of the disciples. All of them were in jail. So if that's your standard alone of just writing somebody off, then you would have wrote off your Joshua. Mm -hmm. Remember them that are in bonds. It's bound with them. And them with suffer adversity. And when some people are going through severe affliction in this walk, you say, oh, well, that brother's going through such and such. Most high must not be with him. Let me separate myself from him. Mm -hmm. How many people have seen these things happen? You would have did the same thing to the Messiah. Go ahead. And then would suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Cain. Verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, Elohim will judge. We have to beware of the spirit of whoremongering and adultery. Because Elohim will judge these spirits. So let us not forget to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Hallelujah. Got some comments? No. All right. Well, let's go right back to Genesis. We were in Genesis 18, right? So Sarah, she obeys and she makes food and she's feeding Yehoshua and his angels. Verse 7. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good. Man, you're going to take a good calf and give it to people we don't know? Man, we could eat that ourselves. And gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. Mm -hmm. And he took butter mm. and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. That sounds like fettuccine to me, Alfredo, right? Butter, milk. Mm. That's like Alfredo sauce. <laughs> Go ahead. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto and him, then He goes to serve them. Abraham has servants. He could have told the servants here, y'all go take care of them, do this, this, and that. No, Abraham himself serves him. Was he aware he's serving Yehoshua HaMashiach? The son of the glory, the son of the power on the right hand side? Miraculous birth is going to come out of this. Go ahead. All right. And he took butter and milk. Verse 8. And the calf which he had dressed. And said it before them. And he stood by them under the tree. And they did eat. And they said unto him. Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said behold. In the tent. This is a spiritual principle. 
Sometimes you hear in churches and they'll focus it only on physical money. But when you're willing to make a sacrifice for the Most High Yah and you're found faithful in due season, when he's willing to bless you, if you put a sacrifice down, he will take that sacrifice and make it much greater. So because they made this sacrifice to the Most High Yah of taking from what they have to honor Yah with it, Yah took the same thing and honored them back much greater. Your sacrifices can be fasting. It could be serving. It could be ministering to others. And it could be alms, donations. A sacrifice is something that you have to give up. That sometimes might be a little bit uncomfortable for you to do. If it was always comfortable, then it wouldn't really be a sacrifice. Sacrifice is something... Like when you're fasting, sometimes you're going to feel them stomach pains throughout the day. You're going to be, oh, man. But then you pray and you ask for Yah for things while you're afflicting yourself. That's a sacrifice. And he's more inclined to answer your prayers when you give sacrifice. So however you are able to sacrifice and you're seeking Yah, when you make sacrifice, he will turn and reward it unto you. So Abraham makes sacrifice if he and Sarah did not do this, they would not have received this blessed child. Verse 9. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Mm. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. So well, it's impossible for them to conceive a child. She's not even having the manner of woman anymore. And Abraham himself is aged. Mm. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? I don't need my Lord being old also. So are me and my husband going to enjoy the marriage bed and conceive? And we're like 100 years old right now? <laughs> she said, man, these people, who are these people? But it was her obedience that allowed her to receive a great gift, greater than she could have asked for. Something she had been praying decades for. And waiting decades for it. Because they were faithful throughout all of that season, Yah. From this little sacrifice, he turned that little sacrifice into the greatest thing they could have imagined. A child. From their own one. Verse 13. And Yahuwah said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I with surety bear a child which am old? Let's look at the order of things. The Sarah Read verse 10. All right, verse 10. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. Which was behind him. What does that mean? Order. 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 And Sarah was out of order. Do you think she would have been blessed with the promised child that she's been praying for all this time? Order. Did she usurp Abraham and go up in front of their face and try to Make herself seen and known and all this in front of these guests. When she heard what was said, where was she? Behind the tent. At the tent door. Was she all in the midst of the men's conversation? If she was, do you think she would have received the promised child? 
So our conduct can dictate the gifts that Yah is willing to give us. So when the man is in order and the woman is in order, then Yah can bless abundantly. They were already blessed, but the thing they truly desired in their heart is now accessible to them because they sacrificed and they were in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 13. 13. And Yahuwah said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Yahuwah said unto Sarah. Mm -mm. Unto Abraham. Why did he say that to Abraham? Abraham. He's responsible for it. Cain. So because there's order now, Yehoshua, when talking and dealing concerning Sarah, he goes to Abraham. She can't now say, well, I'm called and I'm elect too, just like you. So I can go to Yehoshua myself while you sitting there, Abraham. Order. This order is going to lead to a miraculous birth. Go ahead. Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a surety bear a child which am old? Verse 14. Mm. Is anything too hard for Yehovah? Anything too hard for Yehovah? Man. Man, if we only had that thought several times throughout the day for ourselves, whenever we doubt something is possible, whenever we doubt something can be done, whenever we doubt something can be fixed, whenever we doubt something can be restored, is there anything too hard for Yehovah? If you were going to create the sun, how would you do it? What would you make it out of? I mean, nothing that's earthly had to be some kind of like holy kind of source. Mm. Something that can like um, bring life to plants and things like that. Mm. That's only something like yeah, I can do. And let's say Yadiah Quetan, let's say he created the sun. How would you keep it suspended in the air? Mm. Nah, I ain't gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's way too hard for us to even understand. What do you make the sun out? And then once you make it, how do you keep it perpetually hot? And then once it's hot and you make it, how do you keep it positioned in the middle of the heaven? We have no idea how to do that. So if there is someone, our Elohim, who can create something like the sun, it can keep the whole earth, light the earth and the planets, and be for signs, seasons, times, dates, and years, and then is suspended in the heavens, if he is wise enough to do that, he can do anything else that we need done. Our little problems, do you think that's too complicated for him to figure out if he can figure out how to suspend the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all of the heaven? He can create all of that himself. And we don't even know the first thing of what, how to make any of that stuff, so that what's our problems to him? When we pray and ask him to solve them. Is there anything too hard for y'all? What situation can we have that's literally too hard for him? Not even Satan and all of his angels and all of humanity can come against your host from prevail. You have a scale, you have one drop of your host's blood on one hand. And all of Satan and his angels and all of humanity and all of the creatures of creation and all that on the other side, that one drop of blood will be heavier than all of creation against it. All the power of the enemy and scale on one side of the name of Yehoshua and the other side of the scale, which one's heavier? Which one's mightier? So what's our problems for him? They're great for us. Our problems are too much for us to bear. But what about for the one who created the sun and left it there?
If you were going to make a seed for a tree, what kind of ingredients would you put in it, Ema? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we can't even make a seed, a small seed like that. We have a tiny seed that can turn into a huge tree. We don't even know what we would put in that. Just add water and it grows. What? Where would you start? We, that's too much for us. But not for our Elohim. Go ahead. Is there anything too hard for Yahuwah? Is there anything too hard for Yahuwah? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. Then Sarah denied. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. That's why a woman needs a covering. Because spiritually, when it comes to certain types of accountability, sometimes our sisters shy away from it. Mm. So now she said, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Abraham's her covering. That's why he went to Abraham. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. But she was afraid. But she was afraid. Go ahead. So she needs a covering to protect her. Go ahead. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Yeah, you said that, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sidon. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. All right, let's go now to chapter, um, I think it's 20. Oh, 21. So because of their willingness to obey, because they were decent and in order, and because they were willing to make a sacrifice, and that sacrifice actually was feeding the Messiah himself, washing his feet, feeding him, comforting him. They received the promised child. And ultimately, that promised child is Jehoshua himself in the flesh from their bloodline. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, still in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 21. And Yehovah, verse 1. And Yehovah visited Sarah as he had said. Mm -hmm. And Yehovah did unto Sarah. As he has spoken. Dang, hallelujah. Now Sarah's blessed because she got up to prepare that meal. Now your host gets up to prepare a child for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which Elohim has spoken to him. A miraculous birth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A woman who is, I think, 90. Past the man or woman conceives and gives birth. Can you imagine a 90-year-old woman in labor in the hospital? Can you imagine that, y'all? Fine is all everything, too. A hundred years old, wherever she go, Kings is trying to do this and that. And she walking in there, and people in their 40s and 50s stop having children, and she's up in there giving birth. And Abraham's like, push. <laughs> This is a miracle birth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have a miracle birth at many points in your life when you end this truth. Something miraculous Yah does for you that's magnificent that only he could do that. You have to give him the glory and acknowledge him for. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bore to him, Yitzchak. Hallelujah. Verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Yitzchak, being eight days old, as Elohim had commanded him. Now this child is the child of co covenant, the child of promise. Verse 5. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Yitzchak was born unto him. Hallelujah. And Sarah said, Elohim have made me to laugh. I thought you ain't laugh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, it's okay. <laughs> So that all that hear will laugh with you. Hallelujah. 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 Turn her sorrow into joy. The woman who waited 90 years to have a child, perfectly healthy, 
Nothing wrong with her body. But has to wait 90 years. Imagine her sorrow. Trying to conceive all of this time. Hagar comes along. Hagar has a child. Hagar's rubbing that in her face. Look at this. But he takes that sorrow and turns it into joy. Hallelujah. Miracle birth. Go ahead. Verse 7. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given child? Can you imagine a woman on the walker and <laughs> breastfeeding at the same time <laughs> with a cane nursing? <laughs> what a sight. She said, They're going to laugh when they see this. <laughs> Go ahead. For I have borne him a son in his old age. Amen. Verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Yitzchak was weaned. Mm -hmm. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Misreen, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Verse 10. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Yitzchak. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Miracle birth. And death come right behind it. Miracle birth. Now his son is cast out. Son Ishmael cast out from him. The birth. Death and resurrection of the Hebrew slaves. This is the cycle of life. That we walk in as we come into the truth. Hallelujah. There could be no resurrection without a season of death, so to speak. There could be no comfort without affliction. What we need, the Ruach HaKodesh, what we need, the Holy Comforter, unless we dealt with affliction. Would y'all need to heal us unless we have been made sick? Would y'all come to give us relief unless we were under a burden? Amen. Go ahead. Verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And Elohim said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarai have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Yitzchak shall thy seed be called. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. And also the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Resurrection. Hallelujah. So now he's told Ishmael is going to be cast off. But then Yah says, He's going to be resurrected. He's going to be a mighty and a great nation. All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah. Let's go down. Let's go to chapter 22. We have this miracle child, this miracle birth. And now we're in a season of testing. So when you're in a season of testing, do your friends forsake you? Do your loved ones forsake you? Do your family forsake you? Or do they endure to receive the blessing? What if Abraham, when he was tested, said, I can't do this? Would he have received this promise that was going to be given to him, this resurrection of his son that's about to be sacrificed? Let's look at this. Chapter 22, Genesis, verse 1. All right, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things. The Elohim did test Abraham. He's going to get tested in his walk. Sometime or another, we're going to get tested. Hey, if I walked up to you and I said, hey, man, I got a, I got a gold chain and I'll sell it to you for $10. You got $10 on you? Mm. What would you say? It's good to help the poor. <laughs> so you would say yeah but how do you know it's real no it ain't real it's 
too low. What if it was? It has to be tested. It has to be tested. Okay, let me put a little lighter to it. Let me put a little fire on it. If this is fake gold, then it's going to start burning. Mm. If I put a little heat to it, it'll start changing color. If this gold is fake, it'll start smoking. Real gold ain't going to do that. Pure gold won't burn. If it's a fake gold, then the impurities in it will start to burn and discolor it. It has to be tested. Go ahead. Verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Verse 2. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Yitzchak. Thine only son, because the other son got cast aside. And Yah said, yeah, listen to what Sarah said this time. Send him aside. So now, this is like his only child. Take now thy son, thy only son, Yitzchak, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, mm -hmm. and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains. Which I will tell thee. Mm, grievous death. Miracle birth. Promised child. But now in this testing period. Are you willing. To die. Are you willing to die to the flesh. Is what this is about. Are you willing to die to the flesh. To walk in the Ruach HaKodesh. This is what this is about. Life, death, and resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. He set his alarm clock real early, first thing in the morning. He didn't flinch. He's willing to sacrifice the flesh to walk in the Ruach. Hallelujah. And took two of his young men with him. He saddled his ass, so it means he packed his suitcase. Mm -hmm. And Yitzchak, his son. Got two people to help him out. And say, Yitzchak, come on. And claimed the wood for the burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And rose up. And went unto the place of which Elohim had told him. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Then on the third day. Three days and three nights. Hallelujah. Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar of off. Mm. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. What's the place he saw afar off? Oh, the mountain, right? Mm. Yeah. Is this not the same site that Yehoshua would be crucified on? Centuries later. That's, that's the same as the um, Temple Mount, ain't it? Yep. This is the Temple Mount. This is the same location where Yehoshua would be crucified and resurrect. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Verse 6. Genesis 22. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering. What was your host crucified on? The wood. Mm. He was made a burnt offering. His sacrifice. Yeah. The death, the life, death, and resurrection of the Hebrew slaves. Go ahead. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Yitzchak, his son. And he took the fire in his hand. The affliction. And a knife. He was pierced <laughs> in his side. And they went both of them together. The father never left the son while he was being crucified. Hallelujah. And Lee, Ali, Lama Sabachthani, my Elohim, my Elohim, why hast thou forsaken me? The father was with him the whole time. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And Yitzchak spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, Elohim will provide for he himself. For he himself is the lamb. Is the lamb for, for a burnt, burnt offering. offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For he himself is the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. The mm, mm, mm. that is speaking through him. Prophesying yeah. by the Messiah. Yeah. So they went. So they went. Both of them together. The father was with the son in that hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 9. And they came to the place which Elohim had told him of. Mm. And Abraham. Calvary. Golgotha. Okay. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Yitzchak his son. They bound Yehoshua HaMashiach, did they not? Mm hmm. Mm. And laid him upon the altar upon the wood. Upon the wood. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. By this test, and Abraham passing it, he would be found worthy to be the progenitor of Yehoshua HaMashiach, whose own father would slay the son, his only begotten son, for the sake of our own sins. The birth death and resurrection power of the most high yah hallelujah for the hebrew slaves because abraham was faithful in this test which anybody in his family would have called him insane to do how many people would have forsaken abraham in a season like that and called him insane because of his obedience and his faithfulness yah made him the father of many nations and would give resurrection power unto the son of Abraham from the dead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Verse 11. I started 10. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Yehovah called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the land, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Elohim. So when you pass your test, then y'all can say, now I know you fear Elohim. Because the things that are dear to you, you would sacrifice them for the sake of my word. We go through this many times in our walk. could be for things, possessions, people. How many times have we been tested? <laughs> Lost count. Are you found faithful when you're tested? So that the most high can say, now I know. Now I know. Read it again. Now I know that thou fearest Elohim. Seeing thou hast not withheld whatever it is that he requires from me. Could it be family members? Could it be friends? Could it be job? Could it be position? Could it be fame, fortune, houses? What else? Whatever it is at that season in your life. When you're tested, and y'all say, will you give this up for my sake? Will you fold? Not knowing the whole time the Most High is going to spare it anyway. He's going to say, you know what, that's far enough. I know your heart now. You don't even got to go no further. I will do the rest. Hallelujah. We got any comments? You can read some. Mm -hmm. Praise be the most high. Uh. Gene How many times we've been tested? With each other, with other people. Okay. Could be sons, daughters, could be parents. Okay. 
Could be possessions. Could be house, home, jobs. Everything. Everything. Ministry. When he tests you, are you going to withhold from him? The one who gave it to you to begin with? Mm, 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 mm. Gene Ross says, Dang. If Sarah would have kept the faith and believed she would have conceived, would Ishmael still have been born? That's a good question. <laughs> Did she delay it a little bit longer by giving Hagar to Abraham? Just like um, um, well, Rachel gave Bilhah in her place, and that created Dan, and Dan became a thorn in the side of Israel. Mm -hmm. And um, Yekalia Israel. Shalom, says, sis. Wow. Shabbat shalom. Wow. This breakdown has me speechless. Hallelujah. Praise your Hosha Mashiach. And AC McGowan says this brother has a great teaching. It comes from above. All praise to the Most High Yah. And this is something more I admit and I talked about, but. The Ruach just gives where to go find it in the scripture. May Yah be glorified. Obadiah says, wives must submit and accept the covering of their husbands. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stephanie Jackson says, I need a good covering. Yah, give me a good covering in Yehovah's name. Hear her prayer, Father, and grant it unto her. Amen. And that's Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Amen. Verse 12, and he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now, now I, know I know that thou fearest Elohim, hmm. seeing, that, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. How many of us will withhold children, sons, daughter, father, mother, husband, wife, job, bank account? Cars, vehicles, clothes. We've seen some people came and sacrificed their clothes if it got idols on them. They'll leave the faith altogether and deny the most high rather than get rid of clothes with idols on them. Seen it happen. People who could have been have high callings forsake the most high for clothes. Seen it. What else? Will you forsake the things that Yah requires of you, not knowing he's going to give it back to you anyway? Now I know that my servant serves Yah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by so his horn. if we stop... Halfway through the test, we never get to see the vision that Yah's trying to show us. He's trying to show Abraham there's a ram caught in the thicket. But if Abraham stopped halfway through, he would have never saw it. And he would have lost all of his blessings. Bringing shame to the Most High. Go ahead. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering. Instead of his son. Hallelujah. So y'all have a replacement ready that you don't even know. You didn't even know to ask for this. And y'all said, don't worry about it. I got something lined up for you. My good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place. Yehovah Yireh. Yehovah Yireh. The Christians say Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Yehovah Yireh. Yehovah shall see to it. He shall provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of Yehovah, it shall be seen. Amen. Resurrection. Miracle birth. Tragic death. Resurrection power. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book. Well, go ahead. Let's read this. Verse 15. And the angel of Yehovah called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yehovah, for because thou hast done because this. Because you have done this, 
and has not withheld thy son. Thy son, or fill in the blank, whatever it is, thine own that son. Yah requires of you in that season. And it could be different seasons in our lives that Yah requires different things. Go ahead. That in blessing, I will bless thee. I'm going to bless you. Go ahead. And in multiplying, I will multiply And increase you, multiply you. As the stars of the heaven, mm. and as the sand which is upon the sea, the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, mm. and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Evrim, Hebrews chapter 11. Praise be to the Most High. Someone asked a question about how old Isaac was when that happened. I think he was 40. I think Isaac was 40 when it happened. He was grown by that time. So, I think in a book of Joshua or Jubilees, it says him and Ishmael were kind of having an argument or a debate saying, well, I'll do this for the Most High. I love the Most High so much, I'll do this. And then Ishmael says, well, I love the Most High so much, I'll do that. And then he went back and forth. And then Isaac said, well, I'll give my life. And then Yah said, okay, let me test you. How many Hebrews you hear say, oh, I'll give my life for the Most High. Mm -hmm. oh, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Then when tested, they fall away. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't have resurrection without faith. You can receive a miraculous birth. And you might endure a tragic death, but without faith, there is no resurrection. Hallelujah. Go ahead. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Mm -hmm. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Elohim. So if we ask y'all, okay, well, what would you create the sun out of? Oh, he said, oh, that's easy. He'd be like, what, y'all? My word. <laughs> and we'd be like, oh. I asked you what you make the sun out of. What you said you would make it out of? I just said it could, couldn't be anything from earth that y'all had to do with it. And how would you suspend it in the heavens? I had no answer. And y'all just say, oh, that's easy, my word. <laughs> Go ahead. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Mm -hmm. By faith, Habil offered unto Elohim a more excellent sacrifice. It starts with what? Faith. And how is faith proven? Your By your works. By your sacrifice. And your sacrifice is a work. Are you willing to sacrifice? Because Jehoshua was willing to sacrifice for us. His sacrifice led to his tragic death. But through the faith, there is a miracle resurrection. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto Elohim a more excellent sacrifice than Qayyim, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Elohim testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speak. How can... You still speak if yet you're dead, if not for resurrection. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Verse 5. By faith, Hanok was translated that he should not see death. And he was not, for Elohim took him. He was not. It's like he dead, but Eli um, Elohim took him. Resurrection. Boy up. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased Elohim. Hallelujah. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm. 
For he that cometh to Elohim must believe that he is. And that? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, man. Mm. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of Elohim of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Mm -hmm. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Yitzhak and Yaakov, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is Elohim, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. Therefore, sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Amen. These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they were told by Yah that they would receive certain things and they received really just a shadow of them in their life, not knowing that Yah had so much more intended for them in the kingdom of heaven. And they were rich in this world. How much more so in the kingdom? The magnificent death a birth, the tragic death, and the resurrection. Hallelujah. The Hebrew slaves. Go ahead. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. We know we're pilgrims here. We know we don't fit here. We're strangers in this earth because the world hates Yehoshua. So we know we're just really passing through. We don't set our heart on the things of this world. We're blessed by what Yah blesses us with, but we know we can't put our heart into it all. Our heart has to be upwards. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. If you two caught up and, oh, I like this city, or I like this town. Oh, man, I, I like the weather here, and I'm just not going to move from there and such and such. Go ahead. They might have had opportunity to have returned. You're going to go right back to the place. So, yeah, I was calling you out, but you like the weather here so much that you're going to miss out on your blessings because I keep running back to the old place. Go ahead. Verse 16. But now they desire a better country. Chain. That is, in heavenly. Wherefore, Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim. Could you imagine being called the Elohim of Nasi, Yadiah, Yeshua, and Yehoiah Queen? The Elohim of Ema Samaya and Sister Kasita? The Elohim of Mori Ahmed and, and Brother Gadelia, Arim, Brother Yeshayahu, Brother Eliezer, Ali, uh, Cornelius, all, all of the names of all of the... the can you imagine y'all saying you can call me by the name of my servant here? Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim. Can you imagine going to work and they try to sabotage you at your job and the Most High vindicate you? And they say, man... Brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so's God was with them in that one. I want to know their God. Because only God could have got them out of that situation. Now the Most High is known as the, the Elohim of, of Ema. The Elohim of brother. Because you honored him. Wherefore, Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he had prepared for them a city. By faith. Verse 17. 
by faith, Abraham, when he was tried. When he was tried. Do you run when you're tried? When he was tried, what happened? Offered up Yitzchak. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, For in Yitzchak shall thy seed be called. Accounting that Elohim was able to raise him up even from the dead. What? Accounting that Elohim was able to raise him up. What's it being raised up? Resurrection. Resurrection. Knowing that the same Elohim who gave this miracle birth is now requiring sacrifice, a tragic death, can give him a magnificent resurrection. It takes faith. Read it again. <coughs> verse 19. 18, let's start at 18. All right, verse 18. Tainly something. Uh, can we sum the Verse 18. Of whom it was said, for in Yitzchak shall thy seed be called. Mm -hmm. Accounting that Elohim was able to, to raise him up. Resurrect him. Even from the dead. Even from the dead. Came. From whence also. He received him in a figure. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. One more time, read it. All right. Verse 18. Of whom it was said, For in Yitzchak shall thy seed be called, accounting that Elohim was able to raise him up, even from the dead. Dang. From whence also he received him in a figure. Verse 20. By faith. Yitzchak blessed Yaakov and Esau concerning things to come. Mm -hmm. By faith, Yaakov, when he was a dying, when he was dying, guess what? Blessed both the sons of Yosef and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Yosef carries on his legacy and he's resurrected through the children he blessed and laid his hands on. Hallelujah. Verse 22, by faith, Yosef, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Yisrael. Even when Yosef is dying, he knows he will be resurrected. Take my bones out of Egypt. Don't leave it here. I want that miraculous resurrection after this grievous death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yosef was a promised child with a miracle birth. His mother's womb was shut. Miracle birth, tragic death, thrown into the pit, hated by his brothers, sold into slavery. Death, magnificent resurrection, made king of all Egypt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Verse 22. By faith, Yosef, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. And gave... And gave commandment concerning his, bones. his resurrection. Go ahead. By faith, Moshe, when he was born. Miracle birth. All of the children, just like Yehoshua in his age range, slaughtered. Death. Miracle birth. Tragic death. Resurrection. The woman pulls him out of the water. Pharaoh's daughter. He's made prince of all Egypt. Look at this. Go ahead. By faith, Moshe, when he was born, came born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. The king's commandment brought death. That three again. So there's that three again, like three days, three nights. Hallelujah. By faith, Moshe, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Perot's daughter. Resurrection. This lost child of Israel is going to become the prophet, king, and high priest. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Elohim. Death. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Mm -hmm. Esteeming the reproach of Mashiach. Greater riches than the treasures in Mitzrayim. For he had. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Resurrection. Verse 27. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By faith, 
He forsook Miss Ryan, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured and seeing him who's invisible. It takes faith. Without faith, you can't please Elohim. Are you faithful? Or will you break covenant? Go ahead. Verse 28. Through faith, he kept the Pesach mm. and the sprinkling of blood. Death. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. Birth. It's by dry land, mm. which the Mitzrayim are saying to do were drowned. Death. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, fell down mm -hmm. after they were compassed about seven days. Death. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. Life. Resurrection. With Look at this. How many times have you read this? Miracle birth, tragic death, and resurrection. Hallelujah. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe, that believe not, when she had received the spies of Shalom. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Shishon and of Yiftach, of Dawid also, and Shemuel, and of the prophets. Paul didn't have enough time to get into Dawi, but let's get into Dawi. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Any comments? There's one comment. <coughs> Yaakov 12 Yehuda says, Shalom, elder Jediah and family. Shalom. Elder, I see now that your kids, um, yes, um, Isaiah also was um, obedient, just as Yehoshua was in being sacrificed. Mm, king, king. Because if my dad bonds me and had a knife, I'm going to test his feet. Mm. I think that was the only one. First Samuel seventeen. <coughs> oh, first Samuel sixteen. First Samuel sixteen. Let's start at one. First Samuel. Shemuel Rishon, chapter 16 and verse 1. And Yehovah said unto Shemuel, How long wilt thou mourn for the Ul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Death. Miracle birth for Saul, chosen to be first king of Israel, disobeys the Most High Yah, loses the covenant. Mm -hmm. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Yishai. The bit Lechim, for I provided me a king among his sons. Resurrection! New king of Israel! Mm. Go ahead. And Shemuel said, How can I go? If Shaul hear it, he will kill me. And Yehovah said, Death! Take an heifer with thee, and say, I come to sacrifice to Yehovah. Sacrifice! Sacrifice! Verse 3, and call Yeshai to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I, him, and thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee. And Shemuel did that which Yehovah spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? Mm -hmm. And he said, Peaceably. I don't come to sacrifice unto Yehovah. Why, when the man of Yah comes into the town, the people who was already Israelites, why do they be like, you, you come peacefully? Why is, why is it like that? Why do they assume that a man of Yah is coming? 
For anything else but shalom. Go ahead. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Yeshua and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely Yehovah's anointed is before him. Mm -hmm. But Yehovah said unto Shemuel, Look, Look not, not on his, his countenance. countenance or on the height of his stature. Mm -hmm. Because I have refused him. I refused him. For Yehovah seeth not as man seeth. Mm. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but Yehovah looketh on the heart. Verse 8. Then Yeshai called Abinadab and made him pass before Shemuel. And he said, Neither have Yehovah chosen this. Dang. Then Yeshai made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither have Yehovah chosen this. Again, Yeshai made seven of his sons to pass before Shemuel. And Shemuel said unto Yeshai, Yehovah have not chosen these. Mm. Verse 11. And Shemuel said unto Yeshai, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, the youngest birth. Mm -hmm. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Shemuel said unto Yeshai, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Mm -hmm. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready, and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And Yehovah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. This is he, the new king is being born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 13. Then Shemuel took the horn of oil, <clears throat> And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Ruach of Yehovah came upon Dawid from that day forward. Life. So Shemuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Ruach of Yehovah departed from Shaul. And an evil Ruach from Yehovah troubled him. Death. Mm. So now let's go down. Let's go to. We're going to skip a little bit. Chapter, oops. Chapter 17. <clears throat> David goes to fight Goliath. Let's go to verse 18. I mean, 38. Stick up. All right. We're in chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. And Shaul armed Dawid with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. All he armed him with a coat of mail. And Dawid girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And Dawid said unto Shaul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And I will put them off him. What is this? It's the um the deal. Mm -hmm. Deal. Mm -mm. No. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. He doesn't even take the sacrifice these weapons and this armor and put his life on the line. Dang. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand. And chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. It said that Goliath had, I think, four brothers. From what I understand, so he took five stones to slay one of each of those giants, if need be. And chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto Dawid, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw Dawid, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. 
Verse 43. And the Philistines said unto Dawid, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed Dawid by his Elohim. Mm, death. All of this is death. Curse him. Go ahead. And the Philistine said to Dawid, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Death. Go ahead. Then said Dawid to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of Yehovah of hosts. Amen. The Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Amen. This day will Yehovah deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is an Elohim in Israel. Amen. And all this assembly shall know. That Yehovah save it not with sword and spear, for the battle is Yehovah's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet Dawid, that Dawid hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And Dawid put his hand in his bag, and took thence a stone, and slain it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead. He fell upon his face to the earth. Amen. So that we prevailed over the Philistine. Resurrection. He should have died. But because of his sacrifice. When he was tested. What did y'all say about him? Now I know my, save, my servant that we fear as Elohim. What did he say to Abraham? Now I know my servant Abraham fears Elohim. That we, when tested, sacrificed armor, sword, and everything that would have preserved his life. And he ran with five smooth stones. And now y'all can say, Now I know my servant David fears Elohim. Can y'all say that about you? Can y'all say that about me? Can y'all say that about us? The miracle birth, the tragic death, and the resurrection of the Hebrew slaves. This is what he requires of us in our walk. Seasons, different seasons. There's a time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3, let's go. Oh, do we have any comments? Just one. Okay. Irene Ben Yehuda says... Hey. Because when a man of Yah comes Hebrew, comes Hebrews know they did wrong. That's why they asked that. I'm not sure. What he's oh, talking. I know what he's talking about. And he said, "Are you coming in peace?" Um, why are they offended when a man of Yah is around? Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes, O oh, Kohelet, the preacher, Dang. chapter three and verse one. To everything. There is a season. There's a season of miracle birth. There's a season of tragic death. And there's a season of resurrection. There's a season of sacrifice to show forth your faith. To all things, there's a season. Go ahead. To everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. What's the first season? I'll be deep. Go ahead, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first season? Go ahead. A time to be born. A time to be born. That's the first season. What's the second? And a time to die. And then a time to die. And then resurrection from that death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A time to plant. Mm -hmm. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. Life. To death. Birth and death. Go ahead. A time to kill. And a time to pluck up which is planted. Why is that resurrection? Because the seed is under the ground. The seed is under the ground. And whoever eats of that which is plucked up will gain life from it. Okay. Hallelujah. Resurrection. Giving life to others. Uh, yeah. Amen. Verse 3. A time to kill. 
and it's time to heal. God could never heal us if there weren't seasons of death. Mm -hmm. A time to break down and a time to build up. Y'all could never build us up if we never got broke down. A time to weep and a time to laugh. How could we laugh if we never cried before? A time to mourn and a time to dance. How could you dance if you never mourned? A time to cast away stones mm -hmm. and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace. A time to embrace with your loved ones. And a time to refrain from embracing. Even that has seasons. A time to get. Mm -hmm. And a time to lose. Dang. A time to keep. Mm -hmm. And a time to cast away. A time to rent. And a time to sow. A time to keep silence. And a time to speak. Mm. A time to love. Birth. And a time to hate. Death. A time of war. Mm -hmm. And a time of shalom. Amen. Verse 9. What profit hath he that worketh and that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail which Elohim hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Everything. Birth is beautiful in his time. Even death under the right circumstances is beautiful in its time. And most definitely, resurrection is beautiful in its time. He has made everything beautiful mm. in his time. Everything. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that Elohim maketh. From the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. We couldn't tell you what we would do to make the sun, right? Nobody can figure out his work. Verse 12. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Mm. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of Elohim. Amen. I know that whatsoever Elohim doeth, it shall be forever. Mm. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And Elohim doeth it, that men should fear before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be. This technology from the days of old. We think this is new, and it's not. You think they didn't have this in the time of Noah? You think the angels didn't have technology with them? That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. Mm -hmm. And Elohim required that which is past. And nobody's getting away. That which happened in the past, you're going to owe him. You're going to have to give an answer for it. He's going to require an answer. Go ahead. Verse 16. <sighs> Go ahead and read it, brother. I didn't say it. Go ahead. And moreover, uh -huh. I saw under the sun... The place of judgment, that wickedness was there. Woo. And the place of righteousness, mm. that iniquity was there. Mm, 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 mm. I said in my heart, Elohim shall judge the righteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Amen. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that Elohim might manifest them. How does he manifest? The estates of the sons of men. He tests them to see whether you are man made in the image of Elohim or whether you are man made in the image of the beast. To discern these things, testing is required. And that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Mm -hmm. Yea, they have all one breath. All those who die and do not see, receive resurrection of the Yehoshua HaMashiach are like beasts. 
and they will receive the mark of the beast. And those who are made in the image of Elohim receive resurrection unto the great glory of the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 19. But that which befalleth the sons of men, mm -hmm. befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one died, so died the other. Yea, they all have one breath. So that a man have no preeminence above a beast. Mm -hmm. For all is vanity. All go into one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to dust again. Mm -hmm. Who knoweth the Ruach of man that goeth upward? And the Ruach of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. For that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be be after him? Amen. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 1. Remember now thy creator and the days of thy youth. Birth. While the evil days come not. Death. Nor the years draw nigh. What thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in mm -hmm. thee. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not dark, mm -hmm. nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. And the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish. And the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man go up to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Death. So serve Yah with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might, that in the day of testing, Yah can say, now I know that my servant fear of Elohim. So when the day of judgment comes, we receive resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Or ever the silver cord be loosed. The silver cord, your soul is loosed from your body. Or the golden bowl be broken. Mm -hmm. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. The golden bowl, your ruah, the silver, your soul, the pitcher your body. The pitcher is the clay. The soul is the silver. The gold is your spirit. Hashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth mm -hmm. as it was. And the rocks shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Resurrection. Hallelujah. Condemnation, resurrection. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And if you were a carnal man or a worldly man, you return to the dust. You go to condemnation in the sense of the earth or the righteous. Their Ruach shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Resurrection. Verse 8. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. So let us not be vain in our own conceits or proud. Mm -hmm. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, Pain. he still taught the people knowledge. Mm. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and said in order many proverbs. Amen. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Hallelujah. The words of the wise are as golds and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, 
which are given from one shepherd. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. Mm. There is no end. Dang. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. What kind of books is this talking about? Books of the Bible? Okay. Mm -hmm. If I go to the library, what am I going to find? Books. Thank you. A bunch of books. How many of them are going to be Bible? Compared to how many that's not? 98% of the books is of the world. 2% in the library might be of the most high. The making of many books, there is no end. This isn't talking about the scriptures. I've seen Hebrews misinterpret these scriptures to try to deter Israelites from reading missing books. This is talking of Worldly books. There's no end. Read it again. Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. We shouldn't study the scriptures that much. That's what that's saying. With all that getting, get understanding. Get understanding. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Let's hear the conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Read it again. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. One more time. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim. How does y'all determine if you fear him? Testing. Testing. So when you are tested, be found faithful. And when you are tested, be willing to sacrifice. When you are tested, know you might have had a miraculous birth. But when you are tested, you might have to go through a tragic death of the flesh. And if found faithful... And you please Elohim, you fear Elohim, you just might receive that resurrection glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim mm -hmm. and keep his commandments. When you're tested, do what? Fear Elohim and keep his commandments. Keep his commandments when you're tested. Don't forsake the commandments nor be ashamed of the commandments when you're tested. For this is the whole duty of man. That's what we're called and designed to do. Don't drop the ball when it's your turn at bat. Verse 14. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment. Some of your works. Every work. Every work. Into judgment. With every secret thing. Everything done in secret will be brought to the light. When there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Those who do evil hate the light and will not come to the light lest their deeds should be exposed. For Elohim Shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment. This judgment for all of our works. We cannot hide anything for the most high. We cannot alter or change and think that we deceive the most high. Yah. For his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. What shall we hide from him? Or do we only fear the eyes of man? For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Y'all young men, I want y'all to say the prayer. Close out.
And if we have any comments after that, you have to read that. Baruch Atah, Adonai Yehovah Tzebaot. Blessed are you, Lord Yehovah of hosts. Gam Gadolata. And great are you. Me'al Hashemayim. Over all the heavens. Baruch Atah Yehoshua HaMashiach. Blessed are you, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Ben HaElohim. The son of Elohim. Kol Todot Laka. All thanks unto you. Torah L'Rachamika. Thank you for your grace. Aleinu. Upon us. Torah la Ahaba. Thank you for love. Bitokenu. In the midst of us. Torah la Slikatka. And thank you for your forgiveness. Le Kasot Awonotenu. To forgive our sins, our iniquities. Kanzakabra. Hallelujah. Barukata Yehovah. Blessed are you, Yehovah. Barukata Yehoshua Hamashiach. And blessed are you, Yehoshua the Messiah. Asher Yabo min Hashemayim, which came from the heavens. Wagam Asherata Hitzav Tanu, and also you, which caused us to be saved. Ata Yehoshua Hamashiach, you are Yehoshua the Messiah. Melech Hakabo, the King of Glory. Nakui Ata. Innocent, pure. You are innocent. We told by time and call an ashim. And you are good to all men. Toda le yom hazi. Thank you for this day. Toda la hasifarim ha eli. And thank you, Father Yah, for these books. Toda la chakma. Thank you for wisdom. Da at ubina. Knowledge and understanding. Torah la or hashemesh. Thank you for the light of the sun. Wagam ha yeriach. And the moon. Asherata barata otalan. Which you created. La azor otalan. To help us. La teit esev basade. La teit. I need a little movie. I don't know if you're dead. To give. To give. Esev. Grass to give grass basade in the field in the field. Torah Yehovah, thank you Yehovah. We Asherata lo shakachtanu, which has not forgotten us. We Asherata natatalanu, and which has given to us makum in benka, place in your son. Hallelujah. Salat na bavakwasha. Forgive us, please. I'll call a bono ten. On all of our iniquities. Call kato ten. All of our sins. Call hara. And all of our evils. She anachno asino. Which we have done. Avino. Our Father. Ten na lanu. Please give unto us. Kowach. Strength. Al la asot hara o. Over all the works of evil. Can okay, not to do wicked anymore. Not to do wicked, not to do evil anymore. Bakuach Benka. And the strength of your son. Old Pa'am. And also. Anachnu Modim Ata. We praise you. Gam Benka. And your son. Nakol Ha Ahaba. For all love. Bashem Yehoshua Hamashiach. Hashem Yehoshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoy the study this Shabbat? Hey, hallelujah. Was it edifying? What was the most edifying part for y'all today? I really like the... Use the microphone. I just really like the concept of... um. Like resurrection, when Damn. talking about Isaac and how um, Abraham pretty much it was like a reenactment of how Yehoshua was like crucified yes. and laid upon the wood. It's the same thing that happened with Abraham. Yes. And it was like um, a shadow of what was to come. Yeah. You?
got any comments to read before we close out? Two more. This is Randy and Brother Lance. Lance says, excellent teaching. Praise Yehoshua Mashiach. All praises to our Heavenly Father, Yehoah, okay. Elohim. Shalom. Shalom. And who else you said it was? I said Sister Brandy and Brother Lance. Brandy. Do you know what time it was? Uh, 524. Come on, son. It's not showing up on here. It's only 525. And there's no message there. But yeah. All right. So we thank y'all for joining us on this Shabbat day. We give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yah. We pray that the study has been edifying. We pray that the prayers... Uh, are heard by the Most High that He grants grace, favor, mercy, forgiveness, healing, and protection over you and over your families and loved ones and over the body of Kai Yeshua and the 12 tribes of Israel. If this study has been a blessing to you, please support the ministry by sending tithes, alms, donations, and so forth to Kai Yeshua at Gmail on Zelle, hallelujah, or dollar sign Kai Yeshua on Cash App, or if you prefer, please visit our website, www.kayashua.com. There's a, uh, a donate, yellow donate button on the site. So please check it out and support the mission and the work. We thank you also for the support of the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures, Gold Edition, the Enoch Calendar, the Book and Secrets of Enoch, as well as the Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles. All these things can be found on our website, HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com. So after the Shabbat, you can go there. We have plenty of specials that we promote during the week. So look for these things. Get your library up to date. Look at it as, as your weapons to fight the adversary with in the last days. We just pray that all of this work and this fruit is a glory unto the Most High, that it edifies you and your loved ones and families. We pray again that the Most High blesses you, keeps you, and, and increases you abundantly. Till next time, y'all bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.